Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here about to finish up on Command 12. Yep, that's right, we've made it through all of the 12 commands. This is the final section of commands where we're going to hear a message from URL, the Angel of Repentance. We're going to run down all of the other classes that we've done out of commands. But in this section, we're going to look particularly at the power of Satan and how we can win the battle against Satan. We're going to look at the virtues and how they control our life. We're going to touch on a little bit about the tribulation and the post-tribulation including the millennial age so be prepared to leave your comments as we go and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already hope you enjoy the class First of all, we want to give all praise and honor to our Father in heaven, hallowed be his name. We ask that he will continue to come by here and to impart wisdom and understanding on us as we continue these classes. In your son's name we pray, man, and so be it. All right, y'all, we're looking at uh, the last portion of uh, the second book of the Shepherd of Hermas called His Commands. We're looking at the last command, um, the 12th command or the 12th mandate and we're looking at the last part of it yep guys it's celebration time we're about to finish up on this whole book we're going through the uh, first commands and we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here in his little summary uh, looking at verse 12 he says and when he had fulfilled these 12 commands he said unto me thou hast now these commands walk in them and exhort those that hear them to repent and that they keep their repentance pure all the remaining days of their life talking about the 12 commands now these are not the, the 10 commandments that you hear in the Old Testament they are in fact different they are in fact the first era commands whereas the or the first era commandments whereas these mandates as they're sometimes called are the second era commands these are the ones who would have gotten after Yehoshua HaMashiach came down here and walked on the earth. It just so happened that the Catholic Church fell out of love with the Shepherd of Hermas, uh, probably because it identified them as false prophets and that their practices as false doctrine. And so they got rid of the book and didn't count it as one of the canonized books in the, uh, in the book that we call the Bible. But nonetheless, these are commands that were given to us what we should have been following the whole time uh, for the past 2000 years. We should have been understanding these commands, but we've already gone through and looked at the uh, first um, commands here. We've actually completed them all. This is just a summary part of it. So you can go back and look at those or you can go back and look at the uh, the text itself. We're going to put some links at the end of this video so you guys could do some further study on it. Looking at verse 13, he says, and fulfill diligently this ministry which I commit to thee and thou shalt receive great advantage by it and find favor with all such as shall repent and believe thy words for I am with thee and will force them to believe now this ministry that he's talking about um, we read about in Hermas where he actually told us to go out and teach the, the, the shepherd of Hermas now um, <clears throat> if you've been around our channel you know that we we um, um, are familiar with a lot of scriptural texts and I'll go as far as to say is this is one of the only if not the only scriptural text that actually gives us a um, a uh, commandment to go out and and perform some type of ministry it's like the rest of them are there for our own edification whereas the uh, Shepherd of Hermas, it actually tells us to go out and take what we've learned and actually teach it to others, which is why we're doing this class. This is why where Hermas Academy got started from is we were asked to go out and teach the commands. We were asked to go out and teach the similitudes. And I noticed some other guys around the web are starting to teach those as well. Me and, wife, me and my wife decided we're going to go in and start looking at some of their classes, maybe do a review on those guys and see what they have to say about the Shepherd of Hermas because we all have something to add. We all have input and we can take advantage of this from each other all right looking at verse 14 he says and I said unto him sir these commands are great and excellent and able to cheer the heart of that man that shall be able to keep them but sir I cannot tell whether they can be observed by any man all right now here you have Hermas about to get in trouble with the angel of repentance he is talking to the angel of repentance this is uh, Uriel if you if you know anything about your archangels he's, he's saying to the angel um, 
I don't, I don't, you know, them some good ideas that you got, but I don't know if anybody would be able to keep those commandments. And the commandments that, you know, just to give you a quick rundown on what they are, I, I went in and I wrote them down. Um, the first one is to believe in God, uh, which, you know, all of the commands seem to start off that way. It's very important to believe in God. But it goes on to say to avoid distraction or slander. It says to give to all and do it with simplicity. Another commandment is to avoid lying and to love truth. Another one is uh, to avoid sadness. It says to be patient and long suffering. Um, another commandment, it says, uh, do not commit adultery, which also includes uh, taking images and such, which is particular reason why we don't show our images over here at Hermes Academy. Um, another one, another commandment was to avoid anger and or violent temper. Then he goes on to identify uh, the angel of uh, righteousness versus the angel of wickedness. We've, we've had this thought, you know, in past cartoons or whatever, that we have these two angels on our shoulder. Um, these, this book of commands goes in and explains uh, who they are and how they work and how you can how you can tell which angel is actually talking to you. Um, it says to keep the commandments, which this is pointing back to Exodus chapter 20, where you start to hear about the uh, the uh, Ten Commandments. But if you continue on in Exodus chapter 21, 22, 23 and the seven first seven verses of chapter 24, you will get what's known as the covenant. The Ten Commandments begins the, the covenant and then it goes on to explain, you know, how we are to fulfill those those commandments. Then another one, another command or another mandate is do not fear the devil. Another one is to do good and restrain from doing evil deeds. Another one is to pray daily without doubting. And like I said, we've given classes on these, so you can go back and look at those. Um, another, com another command or mandate is to remove grief from your heart and to clothe yourself with cheerfulness. Another one says to avoid false prophets. And it tells us how to test the spirit the spirits and find out who is the false prophet and who's not um then the last one says to put away evil desire and to clothe yourself with good desire so it's a lot of information and it gives a lot of detail on you know these commands it, it, it goes as far as to explain them how to interact in our life how to know if we're being affected by them and then Hermes is here saying hey i don't know if a man can keep all of these and let's see what the angel has to say verse 15 and he answered Thou shalt easily keep these commands, and they shall not be hard. Howbeit, if thou shalt suffer it once to enter into thine heart that they cannot be kept by any man, thou shalt not fulfill them. Okay, so he's telling Hermes, you have to believe that you have the ability to keep these commands. If you, you know, entertain the doubts that you that you'll keep these commands, then you're going to break them. You know, it's, it's, it's real simple to, to think of that. If you, you know, if you're struggling with uh, being angry or if you're struggling with grief or something like that, and then you entertain the idea that, no, I can't be a person who doesn't entertain grief then you know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna um fall for that in one of the um the uh mandates there tells us to avoid evil desires and so that's that's kind of what he's talking about it tells us to avoid doubting too so you can't have doubt as far as these commands are concerned let's look at verse 16 but now i say unto thee if thou shalt not observe these commands and shall neglect them thou shalt not be saved nor thy children, nor thy house, because thou hast judged that these commands cannot be kept by man. If you <clears throat> know the story of Hermes, if you remember, Hermes got in trouble the very first time, not because Hermes was, was a bad guy, but because he allowed his children to partake in lewd acts and he didn't do enough to chastise them guys. And... <clears throat> And what we find out through uh, understanding Hermes, that Hermes being the head of the household is kind of responsible for his or his whole house. So if Hermes will not um, or cannot um, uh, keep these commands or keep these mandates, then he puts his whole house in jeopardy. And that's what it says there. He says, you shall not be saved, nor your children, nor your house. If Hermes can't do right, then his whole family is going to perish. And I, I can understand why he's saying this because I've, I've lived this out a little bit. If you are an angry person, you can expect those those around you to be angry too if you are selfish you can expect those in your house if you're the head of household if you're the man of the house and you are a selfish individual you can sure enough bet that your children are going to be selfish too any the same way they pick up on your bad language every time you say a cuss word well they pick up on your bad habits too and it's going to cause them to leave live a life that's going to you know cause them not to be saved to actually die in the tribulation 
But let's look at 17. These things he spake very angrily unto me, insomuch that he greatly affrighted me, for he changed his countenance so that a man could not bear his anger. This is talking about Uriel, the angel of repentance. He is a very serious angel. He has the responsibility of assuring the repentance of all that will be saved and go through the tribulation and inherit the earth, be a part of the kingdom of heaven. He, he is very serious about his job. And you see here with with um, Hermes, he got a little bit angry with him to the point where he scared him a little bit. Look at verse 18. And when he saw me altogether troubled and confounded, he began to speak more moderately and cheerfully, saying, O oh, foolish and without understanding. So he starts to, he, he sees that um, Hermes is um, um, understanding the, the power behind these words. So he starts to explain things to him, you know, in a more calm fashion. In verse 19, he says, Unconstant, not knowing the majesty of God, how great and wonderful he is, who created the world for man and has made every creature subject to him and given him all power that he should be able to fulfill all of these commands. Now, this is explaining to Hermes the importance of mankind here on the planet. We do have dominance over all of the animals. Uh, we learn in the third testament of the Bible that when we start to embrace our um, universal mother, um, um, that we can start take advantage of some of the power we have over the elements we can start to control the rain control the weather control animals and such it's really interesting how much we how much power we actually have and how much power we give up when we don't keep his commands or his commandments and do what he says we, it's, it's extremely I ain't going to say it's important I'm going to say it's absolutely necessary that we keep his commandments and keep his rules before we can ever expect to get along with nature and such it, it, it even says that if we don't you know keep his commandments keeps his rules then you know uh the elements and the and the, and the wild animals and stuff will will actually start to work against us it says at one point you know the wild beasts will eat our children and stuff like that but but yeah let's go on look at verse 20 he is able said he to fulfill all these commands who has the lord in his heart but they who have the Lord only in their mouths, their hearts are hardened, and they are far from the Lord. To such persons, these commands are hard and difficult. Yeah, we, we, we're going to basically have a a um, genuine fear of the Father, and uh, to the point where we we feel it, feel it absolutely necessary to keep his commandments and his rules and if we don't have that fear if we you know we just you know saying we are Christians as far as you know the way we believe and think but we don't really keep up with his commands and rules and such then keeping these commands and these mandates and stuff that Hermes is that the shepherd of Hermes is talking about it's going to be extremely difficult but those who have no problem with the father and his his commands his rules his statutes his precepts his ordinances then these mandates are going to going to be easy because they're healthy for us and you know is 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 um we we find that they're they're good for us but let's go on 21 says therefore ye that are empty and light in the faith put the lord your god in your hearts and ye shall perceive how that nothing is more easy than these commands nor more pleasant nor more gentle and holy yep and you know like i said he, these classes um these commands and stuff they talk on uh, uh being patient they talk on uh anger they talk on slander they talk on lying they talk on um how the devil works and you know how you know the angel of righteousness you know controls us sometimes and um, it's a lot of great information in there to tell us how to deal with, how to identify when we're in trouble and when some of these things are affecting us. And then it goes on and tells us how to correct them. So if we have a desire to, what does he say? If we're not empty of the faith, but we have the Father on our hearts, then keeping these commandments will be pleasant and it will, be, um, it will, it will not be hard at all. Let's look at 22 and turn yourselves to the Lord your God and forsake the devil and his pleasures because they are evil and bitter and impure and fear not the devil because he has no power over you. Yeah, he doesn't. The devil, he is a uh, fifth dimensional being. This basically means he is an angelic type figure. He doesn't really have the power of mass to really do anything to us. However, he he can get to us in the form of um well, let me show you. Let me show you um, 
something right here. See, this is how the devil interacts with us through these virtues right here. These negative virtues is how the devil interacts and messes with us. You're talking stuff like perfidiousness, uh, and countenance, infidelity, pleasure, sadness, malice, lust, anger, lying, foolishness, pride, and hatred. When we entertain these, when we allow any of these into our life, we're actually entertaining Satan. But if we can get away from these guys, which we can, you know, then we don't really have to have to fear Satan at all. He can't really do anything to us other than what you see in here in these 12 negative virtues here. Um, he doesn't have any power. If he did, if Satan did have power, he would have destroyed this place a long time ago and all of us in it. That's that's how much he hates people. He, he really has a problem with people. 23 says, for I am with you, the messenger of repentance who have the dominion over him. The devil does indeed affright men, but his terror is vain. Wherefore, fear him not and he will flee from you. Talking about uh, Satan and talking about the angel of repentance, who is Uriel. Notice he says that Uriel, notice that Uriel says that he has dominion over Satan, meaning that Satan basically answers to him. You know what I mean? But and then he says the devil does indeed fright men, but his terror is vain. It's it's a uh, um is is vanity and basically you don't want to put any 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 fear in him you 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 basically don't want to give him more power than he already has by by fearing him um but look what it says here wherefore fear him not and he will flee from you which meaning if you stand up to him then he will be powerless against you and he would actually turn and run from you because he, he doesn't he doesn't like when people stand up to him so to put off those 12 versions and such and make sure you have no part in it no part with them You'll actually be doing a lot to get Satan out of your life altogether. Look at verse 24. And I said unto him, Sir, hear me speak a few words unto you. He answered, Say on. A man indeed desires to keep the commandments of God, and there is no one but what prays unto God, that he may be able to keep his commandments. But the devil is hard, and by his power rules over the service of God. And he said he cannot rule over the servants of God who trust in him with all their hearts. Now, notice this word power here. And you remember um, in the New Testament, uh, we were told that we fight not against uh, flesh and blood but against principality and powers well here are the powers that he's talking about you have 12 good powers and you have 12 negative powers these 12 negative powers they 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 are uh, they are aggressive compared to the good ones the good powers they're kind of meek they're kind of humble they'll flee with any sign of wickedness they'll they'll leave and run away whereas these these virtues these powers here they, they'll run to you and they'll grab you they're forceful the, the Bible describes them it's like um, uh, savage women or country women um, um, they will do harm to you all right so now what this is saying is is the servants of God those who put trust in the father and uh, you know have to put trust in his word to actually go read you know to so show yourself approved you know we don't really have to f worry about Satan we ha we more so have to worry about our own selves uh, entertaining those wicked virtues you know if we can avoid that then we don't have to worry about Satan at all look at verse 26 he says the devil may strive but he cannot overcome them meaning he'll he'll mess with people he's going to try you he's going to try to get in your heart He's going to try to bring in at, uh, anger and sadness or, or or doubtfulness and such. But we have to be we have to stand up to those and we have to fight against them. Look at 27. For if ye resist him, he will flee away with confusion from you. But they that are not full of the faith fear the devil as if he has some great power. For the devil tries the servants of God. And if he finds them empty, he destroys them. Yeah. So now. Again, this is 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 boils down to the fact that we have to stand up to uh, the devil and, you know, put no put put no no power in him, put, uh, meaning, you know, don't recognize that, you know, he he has any power at all. He's not to be feared at all. And when you do so, then he'll flee far from you. He won't have nothing to do with you. See what it says up there. If you resist him, he will flee away from he will flee away with confusion. Yeah, that's true. Any any time any time you see one of these 
uh, wicked virtues coming up on you or the angel of inequity coming up on you, all you have to do is put up a fight and the devil will flee far from you. It is those that don't have any faith, that have doubtfulness in their heart, that will sit there and entertain Satan. And then he'll destroy you. He'll come in and he'll, he'll wreak havoc on you. You know, if you, if you, if you let him in, you know, he's going to, he's, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to tear you apart. His ultimate goal is to kill you. Don't forget that. Uh, look at verse 28. For as man, when he fills up vessels with good wine, and among them puts few vessels half full, and comes to try and taste the vessels, does not try those that are full, because he knows that they are good, but taste those that are half full, lest they should grow sour. For vessels half full soon grow sour, and lose the taste of wine. So the devil comes to the servants of God to try them. Yeah, so every once in a while we're, we're going to have an interaction with Satan. He's going to come in to see if we're truly faithful, Especially those that are trying to do something for the Lord. If you ever take on a mission to, you know, do some type of ministry work or, you know, do some type of, you know, run some type of charitable organization or something if you ever do anything for the Lord the devil's going to be the first one there to to mess with you to try to take you off track but if you are a full vessel meaning you have full faith in the father then you don't really have to worry about him he'll he'll flee away from you if you as long as you stand up to him let's look at verse 29 they that are full of faith resist him stoutly and he departs from them because he finds no place where to enter into them then he goes to those that are not full of faith and because he has a place of entrance, he goes into them and does what he will with them and they become his servants. Now, this is talking about the doubtful people Then show you these uh, virtues again. Anybody who entertains these virtues, whether it be lust, malice, sadness, pleasure, infidelity, it doesn't matter. You pick up any one of these and let this be a part of your life, whether it's pride or hatred, whatever, you're going to be doing the will of Satan. Look at verse 30. But I, the messenger of repentance, say unto you, fear not the devil, for I am sent unto you that I may be with you as many as shall repent with your whole heart and that I may confirm you in the faith. This is saying that we have some protections here. The angel of repentance, Uriel, actually fights for us. He actually helps protect us from uh, the wicked spirits I mean, or that will will get into our friends and our neighbors and our family members sometime he will actually protect us from those as long as we can stay stay uh, uh, virtuous um, then we don't really have to worry about uh, those guys too much for instance if, if we struggle with anger me I, I've struggled with anger among among you know some of these other ones on here but once I learn to put away anger then those things that would make me angry don't come on so much but when I was but the opposite was true too when I didn't have a problem with anger anger when I thought I was supposed to be angry then I was angry every day there was something coming in my life every day to make me angry you know it it it, it, just like just like lust if you are a person who is lustful and um then it, then you could imagine how many how many uh uh, lusty individuals are going to come and get around you you know and how many people who are lust worthy are going to make themselves part of your life wearing a little short dresses or you know whatever to, to keep you to keep you lustful but once you say once you put lust out of your heart and say I want nothing to do with it then it's like those individuals who normally be the walking around in their skimpy clothes all of a sudden feel shameful and they want to go run and put some clothes on when they come around you and that, that's the way it works with all of these the foolish people they want to become intelligent the prideful want to become humble and that kind of thing all right <clears throat> uh, let's go on. I think we're on verse 31. Believe, therefore, ye who by reason of your transgressions have forgot God and your own salvation and adding to your sins have made your life very hard. Talking about these sinful individuals, he said to have put, put your faith back in the Father. Even though you may find yourself in a sinful state or, you know, find yourself in wickedness, you haven't really found uh, righteousness being a, you know, a serious part of your life. You, you, you're, you're not by yourself. There's a lot of individuals right now in 2019 who, who want nothing to do with the scripture, want nothing to do with the commandments or the rules 
Jews or hermits or anything like that. But we, we are waiting for a wake up call during the middle of the tribulation. There's supposed to be a huge earthquake that's going to wake up humanity. And then all of those individuals are going to have a serious desire to put on righteousness. And then what does it say? Do you, do you then worry about all of the sins that you've committed in your in your past times or whatever? No, you just start to do righteous then. Or you start to do you start to do righteously now. You start to do what you're supposed to do at this very second. Um, but let's go on that if ye shall turn to the Lord with your whole hearts and shall serve him according to his will, he will heal you of your former sins and ye shall have dominion over all the works of the devil. Yeah. So this is this is important to the salvation. There, there's a lot of people out there who believe that they're actually too sinful to be in 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 the father's number. It's like they've they've thinking that they've done so much dirt in their life that the father would have nothing to do with them. That could be farther from the truth. The the remember the story of the prodigal son the father is actually actively in pursuit of those people who are living in wickedness than he is for those who are living righteous lives those who are trying to live their life righteous and holy they have a little bit of protection but the, the father is not pursuing them as he is the sinner he's actively going out and trying to work to pull the sinner back into the fold his ultimate goal is for all of us to be saved um let's look at verse 33 be not then afraid in the least of his threatenings for they are without force as the nerves of a dead man but Hearken unto me and fear the Lord Almighty, who is able to save and destroy you and keep his commands that ye may live unto God. Yeah, you just get away from the evilness. You just get away from Satan and start to put on the commands. He said, hearken unto him. He's talking about the angel Uriel, the angel of repentance. Pay attention to what he has to say in the form of these commands and similitudes um, that we hear about in the shepherd of Hermes. Once, he's, once you embrace the idea of what he's saying here, it is life changing and it will get you on a path on a track to salvation um, let's look at verse 34 and I said unto him sir I am now confirmed in all the commands of the Lord whilst you are with me and I know that you will break all the powers of the devil yeah this is Herman starting to realize who it is that he's talking to he's talking to the angel of repentance this is a serious angel he is very very powerful like we said a few minutes ago he has the power over Satan he tells Satan what to do and you know he's over all of our repentance over the repentance of all of humanity so you can imagine how powerful this dude is and he is very serious about his work and what Hermes is saying here is you know as long as I'm as long as you're with me then I'll be able to keep these commands let's look at verse 35 he says and we shall overcome him if we shall be able through the help of the Lord to keep the commands which you have delivered and this is this is important here because he's saying with the help of the Lord in, in today's time guys this pre-tribulation time some believe we're in the tribulation but in this time we're actually controlled by principalities and powers these you know the principalities control bigger governments and and, and and stuff like that but these powers which you see here actually control us they're making us do stuff all of humanity and it is because of the nature of how how we are to be saved we are to be saved through merits and such like that so a lot of us are having to having to gain these merits and you know we get them you know sometimes through anger whether it's me being anger and being angry and then causing some type of pain on myself that's going to get me marriage or somebody else being angry with me and coming and blessing me out that's going to get me marriage too either way we're being controlled by these powers here in, the, in today's age now this doesn't last forever when on the other side of the tribulation those of us those of you who make it to the other side of the tribulation those who will be saved and, and make it to the other side you will not be controlled by these powers anymore that is one of the things that changes and remember it says in a twinkling of an eye we shall change at the seventh trump or something like that that is one of the things that will change is that we are no longer controlled by these powers in fact it goes on to say that satan is locked up during the millennial age which to me means all of these uh negative virtues actually go away we no longer have to deal with any of these and you could if you know anything about the way the kingdom of heaven is supposed to be you know that none of these in the none of these virtues will be a part of the kingdom they're not going to be there nobody's going to be 
be adulterous. Nobody's going to have malice or foolishness in their heart. This this is this is where we live now. And this era that we live in now, the Piscean age, as some people call it. But that's going away. This tribulation, all everybody who likes pride, everybody who likes anger and lying are going to kill each other. They're going to kill themselves and they're just going to be dead after the tribulation. You're not going to have to worry about infidelity or anything like that. It's all going away. And that's what it means by Satan is locked up for 1000 years. There's no more of these type of virtues running around causing us to hate each other, to uh, uh, to cheat on each other and to harm each other and, and you know, uh, start wars and all kinds of stuff. All of that's going away. And, you know, the thing about it, this tribulation is all is, is going to like it's like it's like the last event at the fireworks where it's going to be, you know, one big powwow at one time. Same as like, but let's go on. Look at verse 36. Thou shalt keep them, said he, if thou shalt purify thy heart towards the Lord. And all they also shall keep them who shall cleanse their hearts from the vain desires of the present world and shall live unto God. Now, this right here is important right here. I want to bring this out. It's, we have to get away from the vain desires of the present world before a number of reasons. You know, one of the main reasons is it interferes with our spiritualism. If we're into materialism, which is the opposite, then it'll take away from our from our spiritual nature. Make us, you know, um, not really, you know, pray, pray the way we are supposed to or spend time with the father the way we are supposed to because we are material minded and so that's one of the things we have to do is we have to put off the desires of the present world and then we will live unto God and that part there where it says live unto God um, the angel of repentance explains to us and she explains to Hermes that living unto God all of the father's creatures fear God all every everybody everybody and all of the animals are in fear of God even the even the most stringent atheist right now if God showed him a touch of his power they will fall to their knees in, in pure fear but the thing is not all the father's creatures keeps his commandments and that's what he mean by live unto God is uh, life belongs to those that keep his commandments and so and when we when we learn these commands and when we learn to what does it say purify our hearts toward the Lord and cleanse their hearts from all the vain desires of the present world then we shall live unto God all right, guys, um, that's going to do it for this portion of commands. That's going to do it for all of commands. Um, if you got something out of it, go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and leave a comment. Um, um, look for the end screens that should be popping up. I'm going to put one up for you guys to check out all of the, the uh, sections out of the uh, book of commands that we've done so far. They start off a little bit rough, so um, we may end up doing them again. So hit the bell button so you can get those classes. They come out, and we put up other classes too. So um, you guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and continue praying for us. Godspeed.